Okay, so now that winter's getting closer to being over finally, it's time to start kind of getting back into the dirt bike mode. I'm actually standing in front of my brother-in-law Dan's bike, which is pretty decked out, and then now you've got my sad little lonely bike back here. Um, but I essentially got my bike done last year to the point where I felt it needed to be how I wanted it. So what I mean by that is the Vortex, the handlebars, um, the things I did were things I wish it would have been from the factory. So I finally got my 450L to the point where it's what I want. But now it's time to start doing some accessories. Now he's kind of jump started me here a little bit and we'll cover this bike more later this spring. You've seen us on other videos, we've done two rides with these bikes up in the woods and gas capacity was certainly a concern. So step one would have been to put the IMS fuel tank on here. I mean, there's some others, but if we do a gas tank, the IMS is what we're gonna do. That's 300 bucks. And we don't have a rack on here for carrying everything and not every ride we do is that long. So what we decided to do was go for a rack first. So we settled on the Skaggs rack because we didn't want any bars coming back here to mount into the seat bolts. We wanted the rack completely on its own. And so that's what we're gonna to install today. And so when we're doing a long ride, we can put two and a half gallons back here. That gives you a total of a little over four and a half gallons where the IMS fuel tank's just an extra gallon. And then if I wanna carry a small lunch or anything, I've got a tank bag and I've also got a backpack I can carry stuff with. So for right now, this seemed like the more sensible way to start um, because this is half the cost of the IMS tank basically. Uh, from there, if we wanna go a little bit more, we can put the IMS tank on later down the road. So what's a little bit different today for me is I did no homework on how you install this. I have no clue. Dan did though, Dan did the research. So we're gonna let Dan today kind of guide us through installing this for a little change of pace. So we'll focus on his bike today, but I'll be doing my bike in the background too. All right, so first first thing we gotta do here is we gotta take off these seat bolts, get this to get the seat off, get the rear fender off, so we can mount the bracket in there. So while he's getting the seat off, what you get in the kit is you get this bracket that they made, which is pretty cool. It's gonna slide between the rear frame rails and then you got your bolt kits. And then of course the rack itself. And it did came, it did come with instructions, but again, I got a Dan. I don't yeah, need instructions. Yeah, that's right. So then this fender piece kind of slides around and pops off. Get this. Insert swear words if needed. Boom. And ultimately what you're gonna do is this bracket slides into your frame here and mounts, this is where your other two bolts go to. So okay. you have a front and right here. All right, and then these sense? two little bolts, I'm assuming they yep. go right there? Right here. So this just fits in tight until it gets to that point, just locks right in there. Okay. So that's kind of... Kind of fun being the student. Okay, so one of the things we have to do is we gotta put four holes through the fender, but we don't want holes in this fender. So what we gotta do is get this part out of the way so that we can lay the other part back over and figure out where those holes need to be. Okay, so we've got this loose and we've got this piece slid forward. So right now what Dan's doing is just so getting just, these screws in. So just, yeah, you just obviously just start from back here and then you just slide it, slide it into place. Okay, that's that. Put that in. Put this fender in here. Pretty close where it fits, right? So, and then that looks pretty good. Up through the bottom. These so holes. now we have access to put our holes. Yep. So then you want to punch right through this hole, this hole, and then these two holes back here. And you just want to dent on the bottom of your fence. Just trying to mark that bugger. Okay, so when Dan drilled his fender, I forgot to film it. So I'm failing behind the camera. But anyway, he's going to show us the step drill through my fender. So what he did is he, on his, and just having to do the same on mine, he got a little hole through, and then to finish it off, we actually came from the top down. Um, it didn't look like it was a big deal, but sometimes, like, if you're drilling through something, the other side can sometimes, like, you know, peel out. It just doesn't look as clean as the top. So that's what we're doing. And if Dan does it wrong, he can buy me a new fender. I can buy you a new fender. Nice. Okay, we just do that four more times. So, you, like I said, you just wanna take your little thing and make sure you're, you're where you need to be. So, if you gotta go a little bit more as you find. So, 
just want to make sure that sits in there. There we go. All right, four more. Then we'll, put, more. It then we'll no, put it together. The pressure's on. So okay. uh, you got your holes drilled in your fender. You should be able to button all this stuff back up. Bring this plate up here first, and we'll screw all that together. Okay, so once you got your holes drilled, he's just gonna bolt the bottom back together the way it was before. Okay, the GoPro is not known for being good focusing up close, but there are actually remaining threads right here in the frame with the bolt standing below. So those threads are in part what we're gonna use to bite as we come on top. That locked in place. It's lined up to me. Okay, so what he's doing right here is it comes with different size of the standoffs. And so I believe, Dan, you said the longer going back? Yep. Let's follow the curvy fender. I mean, in some ways, this is actually incredibly simple. Where are you going? Where are you going? Right you ducking here. from film? Come on. Yeah. Come on. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going to Bigfoot. Hey, you Bigfoot hunting? Yeah. Have fun. Don't get eaten. I'm not. If you hear rocks thrown at you, Bigfoot might be close. Yeah. Have fun. Today, Dan. Today, Junior. <laughs> Done. Done. Right. Looks good. So I just put those on there, just slowly, you know, get each screw started, just slowly turn them in. And they all tighten down. You don't want to like put one all the way in and slowly work them down. And once you get those things down in there, that's it. We're good. And I like it because it doesn't hook to your seat, your seat bracket. So this is a standalone unit. You can still work on your bike. You can clean your air filter without having to remove your rack. The biggest, the biggest thing is to make sure you get your fender held down while you mark your holes on the bottom so it's in the right spot. Okay, so we got everything done on here, and I think you'll agree Dan did pretty good for his first time doing the leading the install project. So um, one thing I will tell you guys on here is they tell you to go to three quarters, but that is only if you hit the mark perfectly. If you're off at all, you need to kind of carve out a little bit bigger hole. Now, what was interesting on my bike is if this is the bolts going through, we couldn't get one of my back bolts to go through. And actually, what happened was my frame from the factory the hole actually had an angle to it. Because once we freehand put the bolt in, my bolt was just off. It just, that was the luck of the draw. So we had to take a knife and kind of carve out the plastic a little deeper to let everything settle. But both of bikes are done, they're in, they're great. And so just as an example right here, what we like about them is they're pretty non-intrusive. Um, again, if we follow the kids to the MX track, we don't have a bike, or we don't have a rack that's gonna get in our way. And then this is a common can, we all both have this one. And so if you set that on there, there we go. We've got 2.1 up front, I believe is the number. You know, two gallons right here. So that's more than any riding we'd ever do. And then someday if we did get an IMS tank, we still have a nice rack right here with plenty of hooks and mounting points. So I like it. I think it's a good product on here. And once you get it locked down realistically, since we've already done our tail tidy, we'll probably never take this off again. So this is, this is gonna be here for a long time. One little bonus thing you could do on here if you want is down around the holes. You could caulk them or put some foam or something on here if you're worried about water. But if water gets in there too, your electronics are wrapped um, and there's drain points for things to get out. So I'm not too worried. So anyway, if you guys are looking for a rack, definitely recommend the Skaggs rack if you want a very clean look with plenty of nice mounting points. All right, thanks for checking out the video with us. Keep riding.